Hi everyone! I recorded this video outside my usual weekly schedule because it doesn't focus on any specific shader. However, it's a topic that is useful to explain, as not all details may be clear from the official documentation. The video will cover working with images in shaders, particularly different types of filtering. So, let's get started. Alright, I suppose it's time to admit that there is another reason I made this video. I wanted to draw attention to a new book on Godot shaders that I recently finished and published. You might be wondering why I don't just mention this book in my usual videos, which I release every Monday. Well, the reason is simple. All the regular videos you'll see for the rest of this year were already recorded in advance, back when I had no idea I'd finish the book so quickly. In any case, I highly recommend it to anyone who is serious about creating shader effects and wants to learn more details about the process. It's also a great way to support this channel and the creation of new tutorials. And as always, you'll find the link in the video description. Ok, and now we'll focus on the main topic without any more promotional interruptions. I have the Godot editor open in the version 4.3 and I'll create a new 2D scene. This time, even though we'll be working with an image, I'll add a color rect to this scene, where we'll perform all the texture manipulations. The only difference is that instead of the usual dimensions of 600 by 400, this time I'll set them to 1920 by 1080 because our full HD image has the same size. So let's do it. Right click on the scenes, create new scene, let's call it filters. Okay. And as I said, I will add a new child node color act and set the dimensions to where is it here? Transform 1920 by 1080 full HD resolution. And let's uh, add the shader material to the material section. New shader material, click and new shader and filters GD shader. Let's put it to the shaders folder. It's canvas item, so it's correct. Let's create and click again to open it in the editor. OK, so we'll delete everything except the fragment function and add the most basic code for importing and displaying the image across the entire area. Let's delete vertex and let's delete the white, comment it out. So what we need to do is to add a new uniform parameter, which is sampler 2D and let's call it tax. OK, that's it for now. And the fragment function will be displaying this texture in the standard way. Color is vector4, actually it's texture, which returns vector4 applied on text and standard UV coordinates. So uh, we don't see anything yet because the text parameter is empty. We'll find it in the inspector and drag the prepared image into it. Here it goes, text, and I think I have the usual one, fountain. And we have the usual scene containing a screenshot from our game Whispers of Prague. There is nothing unusual about this shader. It simply display the, displays the image at a one-to-one -one scale. However, a more interesting situation will arise if we incorporate a zoom factor into the display. To make it easier to manipulate, we'll add it as a second uniform parameter. Uniform float zoom with the hint range and starts at one. No zoom at all. OK, from 0.1 to, let's try, 100. All right, this should be OK. And we'll make this small change in the code. UV is multiplied by zoom. So now, when we change the zoom in the inspector, the image changes its size. Let's try it. OK, yeah, this is pretty sensitive, I guess, but I, get, I think you got the idea. OK, and, uh, and what? Yeah, 
a, a, if it doesn't occupy the entire area, like in this case, we can see a dark color instead. Actually, now I see that this isn't the best image to demonstrate the parameter I want to show, so I'll temporarily replace it with something lighter. I have this one with a fog effect. Okay, now we can see it clearly. The pixels at the edges are infinitely stretched in both horizontal and vertical directions, which we probably don't want. So it's time to use the first additional parameter, which we will, uh, which will be repeat enable. Right here, when we define the sampler 2D, it's colon repeat enable. Now the image repeats in both directions. Let's make it two here, so it's better visible. Uh, I think in Godot 3 this was set in the inspector as a toggle, but Godot 4 handles it using parameters in the shader code, which is good to know. If we omit this parameter, the default value is repeat and disable. You can try it now, disable, and it's deactivated. Let's put it back to enable. Okay, we'll stick with this setting so I can return to the original image as it will better show the other details will gradually cover. The fog would interfere unnecessarily with that. So let's drag the fountain JPG back to the inspector. Okay, now let's see what happens when we set the zoom to the lowest value. We can see that some artifacts have appeared, which is understandable when zooming in on the image. Let's switch to 100% so it's even more visible. Notice that the transitions between the enlarged texels, which is the term for the pixels of the original texture, appear blurry. This is caused by the second parameter, which handles filtering, and its default value is filter linear. We'll add it to the uniform parameter right here filter linear. Okay, if for some reason we decide to perform image zooming using a shader in our game, this is probably the most common setting. However, we do have other options. Let's see what happens when we change filter linear to filter nearest. That's some nice pixel art, don't you think? And I believe it's one of the main reasons to use such a filter. So if you are zooming in on textures in your 2D game and want the individual pixels to stand out nicely, filter nearest is the right way to achieve that. Let's zoom in, zoom out. Yeah, perfect pixels. All right, is that all? Uh, you probably know that when I ask this rhetorical question, the answer is always no. We haven't gotten to MIP maps yet, but what are they? Let's return to filter linear and set the zoom parameter to 10. So this would be filter linear and 10. Okay. In the video, it might not be as noticeable, but when the image is significantly reduced, a different type of artifacts occur. The texels are too close together, creating sharp transitions that can appear like a grainy texture. That's why MIP maps or pre-generated smaller versions of the textures are created for textures where we expect a reduced display. I don't think we have any MIP maps for this image. So when I double click on that, we will see, we will see that there are no MIP maps in the inspectors right here, no MIP maps. 5.93 megabytes. This is also why changing the parameter the, to filter linear MIP map has no visible effect. Linear MIP map and nothing changed. All right, let's try to do something about it. We have the selected image in the file system panel and at the top of the scene panel, we'll switch to import and select this property, MIP maps generate on and re-import. Okay, something changed. I'm not sure if you've noticed any change, but there definitely was one. It might be more noticeable if we set the zoom factor to 50. Let's try it. 
okay and now if I change back to linear there should be something yeah can you see that it's definitely more grainy right now and when I change it back it should be smoother here it is and we can verify the image double click now it has 10 MIP maps and the total size increased to 7.91 megabytes okay let's switch back to the to the inspector to the shader parameters the same applies to filter nearest although the difference compared to filter linear is not very noticeable at such a small scale let's see what happens if i switch to filter nearest map map yeah actually there was a very tiny almost unnoticeable change but i guess it is not as uh, visible as it could be so let's switch back to the linear map map okay you may have noticed that when i typed these parameters into the code the autocomplete suggested two more options that add the anisotropic suffix like this one uh, anisotropic to be honest i don't know much about this and it seems like there were any uh, and it didn't seem like there were any visible differences between a MIP map and a MIP map anisotropic. If you have more profound knowledge about this, I'd appreciate if you could leave an explanation in the comments. Also, I've read somewhere that anisotropic filtering has no effect when using Vulkan or Direct3D12, so it's possible that we'll never use these parameters. They might have some effect in texture mapping on 3D models. I don't know. Anyway, let's switch back to just MIP map. And there is one more interesting thing we can do with MIP maps, which is displaying a texture with a set a level of detail, or LOD for short. For this, we'll prepare another uniform parameter. Uniform float LOD uh, hint range and starts at 0 and it will be from 0 to 10 we have 10 mid maps and let's keep the step at point, uh, zero 0.01 no problem with that I mean point 0.1 now instead of the texture function we will use texture LOD which also has a parameter for setting the level of detail let's just switch back to the default zoom and do it here so it would be no texture but texture LOD and we have to add the LOD parameter now if we change this parameter in the inspector we'll see how the image is gradually replaced by its lower resolution copies so now it's at zero let's go to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten totally blurred and let's get back to the origin, original image. This could be used as a cheap blur effect for which you don't need any calculations. Maybe it will find use in some game. Just remember, this only works if MIP maps are generated, otherwise nothing will happen. We can try temporarily disabling MIP maps, <laughs> MIP maps in the import panel. So let's do it again, fountain and import and let's Put it off and re-import and now when I change the LOD parameter nothing is happening because there are no MIP maps at all. Let's put them back, re-import and it should work again. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for watching. I think despite the statement at the beginning of the video that we wouldn't be creating any shader effects we've still achieved some effect after all. Furthermore, I used the texture LOD function for the first time, so we've learned something new from the Godot shading language. By the way, the same function works in standard GLSL, so it has quite a broad range of applications. Anyway, take care, good luck with your projects, and I'll see you in the next video.